In Canva's latest sweep of updates, they released a ton of new features and I've made a whole video for that you can watch here. But what I want to chat with you today is about one of my absolute favorites, which is the style match feature. Now it sounds unassuming, but while you're designing your graphics and building a brand, this is going to be a literal game changer, not just game changer of like, oh, it's a game changer. It's actually a game changer. And I've used it already with my clients and it's only been like a week or two since it's been out. And so I want to step you through it today. Pretty much you can take an element that looks nothing like your brand elements and refer to one of your brand elements and make it like your brand element. So yeah, I could go from this graphic and make it like this and then this graphic and make it like this and then this graphic and make it like this. And all of them now match my branding and I can use it within my brand. And so you can do that with any graphic and make it into any style. Obviously, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm going to show you the things you need to know about it today. So hello, if you have not been here before, my name is Jackie and I am a professional graphic designer who is obsessed with taking our designer secrets and making them accessible to you as an everyday business owner using programs just like Canva. And if that sounds like something helpful to you, make sure you hit subscribe so you can be up to date with all of my latest Canva tutorials and branding insights. And so today's tutorial is going to get into how to use the style match feature. It's going to be nice and quick, don't stress, but in essence, what I want to show you is how to use it and how to use it well. So to get started, I want you, well, firstly, it's really helpful if you know your brand, if you're inside one of my programs. DIY Design My Biz or the Co-Creation Design Club, you will know exactly how to do that. You're going to have done your research, your groundwork, and then you're going to have found inspiration and then found images that kind of back up what your brand wants to represent, all those good things. And so you have a brand style in your mind so that you can actually refer to things. And so if you've done that, usually you would have collated what I call a set of elements. So illustrations and patterns and designs, textures you might want to use on your graphics to make sure they're consistent, they're recognizable, and they're easy to design with. For me, for example, a brand style I'm using a lot at the moment is called Retro Collage. So pretty much I'm using like these little kind of collage -y, retro style graphics. And they're really fun. I add them, just plop them around pages, use them on my designs and creates a little bit of recognition uh, and visual interest. And it's kind of fun. It kind of feels playful and creative, which is what, my what I want my brand to represent. But say for example, I wanted to have one of these, but say I wanted to search, so I search retro collage, but what if I wanted to have a retro collage mouse? Maybe I'm doing a post about mice. All right, in here, what's this one? And that's not really the right kind of style. It's more of a illustration style than it is a photo that's been had like a half tone effect on it. So we've not got something working here for me. So what I can do is use the style match feature. So I'm just going to type in mouse into my element search now and just find a little mouse that I want. Maybe say this one here, that's kind of cute. Now what I want to do if I want to apply this style to this mouse, I can click on something that has the style that I like. And you can see once that's selected, our little menu bar at the top comes up. Now what's new is the part that says new, obviously, that might not be here if you're watching this tutorial after this has been out in the world for a while. But in essence, we're clicking the little kind of paint roller. Now it's going to have the sparkle next to it. You can see if I click on this, we have two options. This is the option that has always been here. And this is the new version that is available to pro users. So if I click on this, what it's going to do is it's going to copy the art style of this design. Now it's picking this up using things like AI. And then if I hover my mouse over and click on my image I want to apply it to, you can see it starts to do something with it. Kind of looks a bit like it's removing the background if you've used that feature before. So it's applying its Canva AI magic to it and it's going to attempt to apply this style to this illustration. Now I haven't tested this exact one yet, so I'm interested to see what it comes up with. Some of these are hit, some of these are miss. Um, so if it doesn't work the first time, please retest it, maybe using a different style or a different image, like I could have used a different kind of mouse to see how it works. And you can see it's done a pretty good job. So you can do this with absolutely anything. I think this one would have worked better if I had more of a realistic looking mouse, but I'm pretty happy with this results and it, it works in well enough that no one would probably notice if they weren't paying attention. So let's use another style. So say for example, you had uh, a watercolor flower style for your brand. So let's type in watercolor flower and say you really like this style. Beautiful, super, super cute. But maybe instead of a watercolor flower, you wanted a watercolor computer. But when I search watercolor computer, it's not really coming up with a watercolor computer because it's not really the kind of thing most people are making. But if you're using watercolor styles in your brand, you might want one. So potentially this one's definitely on the right track, but it might not be what you're after. So what I could do is I can type in here just computer and let's find something that's similar to what I want. Maybe I wanted like this retro style computer, very different illustration style, you know. So instead, let's make these a little bit smaller so we can see them both. I'm going to click on my flower, click on our copy style option and put my mouse and hover it and click over the top of the computer and we'll see what magic it does. <laughs> All right, look at this. It's just finished and you can see it's done a great job of making this watercolor. The only thing it has done, which I've noticed it does a few times, is it is it usually, po it sometimes pops like part of what your original illustration was into the new one. Um, so if that does that for you, I'm sorry, <laughs> it didn't quite work, but it, it honestly did a pretty good job. You could also try to do it again with a different illustration to see if it doesn't really pick up the flower and just copies across the style. Now I want to share one workaround and two caveats with you here. Firstly is 
from my test so far, I haven't found this to work with uploaded elements. So for example, I just downloaded this tick. It was just a check from um, Canva's library. But if I try and copy its style, it's not there. I can copy the style in general, which is usually just copying the colors, but it doesn't have the AI copy style option. But if I had to grab this from elements, you can see that I now have that option. So you can't use uploaded images. It has to be an image from Canva's element library. Another caveat is you can't apply it to photos. So if I was to grab this mouse, that is an image of a mouse, I can't copy this style and then paste it onto my mouse it then says style can't be pasted to this graphic try a different one um, so those are two things that I found that don't quite work something that does work however that is on a similar vein to this feature is the ask canva feature and I could say here change style and I can ask it to change style so I just have to verbally describe it instead of referencing an image so I could say change style to a retro collage half tone press go and then that will go to work and Canva will be working on that there. Similarly, I could do that with the computer. So if I was to grab uh, this computer here, I could again go to ask Canva, click on our ask Canva button, select change style, or I could just literally write change style, change style to a soft warm water color and then press go. And again, it's going to start doing that. And you can see at the top here, I've got my first one for the retro half tone. I've got the second one for the watercolor. So if I click on this, that's where I can kind of jump back in and access what Canva is working on. And I can see that it's still thinking and creating that image for me. So I'm just going to have a bit of a wait now and see what it comes up with. All right, so you can see it's added in something in here. So if I press plus, it's going to insert it into my design. Now it's done a pretty good job. It hasn't picked up exactly, exactly right, but honestly it has applied a more of a retro collage effect. Um, it has added in a background to it, which is unideal, but I could always background move that and it'll be gone. Um, and so that is kind of a workaround for you. Similarly, if I was to go to our chat with the laptop here, I can even click on the image and click on the little discussion view comment option here and it will bring that up and we can see that it's still thinking there. So I'm going to wait that a little bit longer, but I love this feature because it means that I can keep on designing in the meantime and then come back to this when I'm ready to. Perfect. All right. This has now arrived. So I can press this plus and it's going to add it to my design and you can see, look, it's created a beautiful watercolor design. And so if you can't use the copy style option, another great workaround is to verbally describe it with a change style option as well. So that is an incredible feature that we can use. If you are a business and you're wanting consistent brand elements to use in your business, I really highly recommend giving this feature a try. Then all you need to do is say this is a graphic you now wanted to use. You can then download this image and add it to your brand kit. So to download one image by itself, all you need to do is I usually press R on my keyboard and that automatically inserts a little square. I can then change that to um, transparent click on both of these. So select both of these at once, right click and press download selection. And I can download that as a transparent PNG file, maybe make it a little bit larger, download it, and then add that into my brand kit for later on. And I can have all of these brand elements that are totally on brand that I made myself technically. Well, kind of Canva did it, kind of AI did it. We all kind of collaborated together and made these kind of collection of on brand elements for my business. And so make sure you dive into doing that. And if you are thinking, Jackie, I have no clue about brand elements or you rush through that or anything else, I would love to teach you in a slower fashion inside my course. It's called it DIY Design My Biz and it's for everyday business owners who just want to make sure that their graphics and their branding are making sales for their business, not taking heaps of time and actually helping them to be proud of their brand and their business. And if that sounds like something you would like, just head to DIYDesignMyBiz.com and you can find out more right there and I would love to have you inside. So thanks for joining me for this tutorial. If this has been useful, make sure you hit subscribe, hit like, and I would love to know in the comments what kind of styles you're applying to your own elements. See you next video.